Hi everyone, Nova here again from Brighter Outlook Counselling Service with this week's live stream Narcissistic Abuse Recovery Question, Answer and Support Session. Thank you so much for joining us here again tonight. It's awesome to have you back as always. Okay, I thought I should probably explain, uh, first off, why I'm wearing a purple tonight. Well, a, a purple scarf at least. And um, of course, I've got purple behind me, as you can see. Today was National Step Up for, for Child Safety in Australia. Now, uh, all Australians have been asked to, to wear purple uh, and um, use the hashtag Step Up to demand uh, family law reform to ensure our children are safe uh, within the family law system. Um, as you know, as you guys know, you know, trying to uh, weave, you know, the, the judicial system when you've got children and uh, trying to get, you know, what, what's fair uh, and what's, what's safe for them when, when you know that you've got a, a toxic uh, parent um, who's, you know, involved with that child. It's, it's extremely stressful and we often don't you know, we often don't know um, what's going to happen and if, uh, if you know, our, our children are going to be safe and, and placed with the, I guess, the parent who um, is most appropriate. So um, we've got David DeMars here tonight uh, to join us and help co-host the show. Um, and I can see David there already, so I'm going to let him in. Fingers crossed, as always, that this works. Adding, adding, and there he is. Hey, David. Hello. How you going? Great. How about you? Yeah, not too bad. Very well, actually. I was listening to your. Um introduction can you finish are you done i want to hear more about the step up oh uh, okay so um yeah because obviously you're in the state so so you wouldn't know too much about it so step up it, i think this is the first time it's happened okay and um people are recognizing that kids just aren't aren't safe well they don't believe they're safe within our current um you know family law system within the ju and the judicial system is not protecting them adequately. So today, um, everyone was asked to wear purple while they were getting active, whether that's, you know, walking, running, dancing, as I did today. I stepped up while I was doing my, my Latin dancing, wearing purple and to use the hashtag step up. And um, groups got together in all the capital uh, uh, cities, um, in all the states in Australia, uh, to yeah, to demand a, a family law reform to to uh, I guess express our concerns uh, around children being safe. So yeah, hence the the purple scarf and all the purple on me today. But um yeah, I'm not wearing the purple tutu that I wore today. I took that off. <laughs> so yeah. So um, we've got Aletha here. Hi, Aletha. How are you going? Um, so David, we kind of talked about the fact that um, this would lead us into tonight's topic, topic the you know, the, the, the fact that it is Step Up uh, for Child Safety Day today. So did you want to kind of um, talk to everyone about what we were going to um, be discussing tonight? Yeah, uh, well, that's the topic, children's safety in the home, in the family. And um, mm -hmm. I think it's important to identify the effects of emotional abuse around children, not just to children. Um, so I have different things to talk about. Uh, yeah. So I think I think it's really good to bring this up. Physical abuse, sexual abuse, things like this. We kind of know what that is. And emotional abuse, a lot of us don't. Yeah. Um, a lot of people, a lot of children can't even tell somebody what's wrong in their home or how they feel. They don't even know because a lot of neglect and emotional abuse. We can't, None of us can really put our finger on it, on what it is. So I, I like to yeah. talk about that, and I think that's an important factor with children and safety. Yeah, yeah, me too. And and I, I find, uh, you know, the people I talk to and, you know, the people that comment on, on Brighter Outlook's posts every day, some people are still uh, 
are still guilty of minimising their own abuse because, uh, and I actually put a post out last night, because, you know, uh, they, they weren't hit, you know, and they weren't, um, it wasn't physical in the sense they weren't punched. Um, but, you know, the, the, the psychological abuse and, and the, you know, the emotional abuse and things like neglect and, yeah, it's just as horrific. Just because you can't see the bruises doesn't make it, you know, any less of abuse. That's right. Yeah. 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 Hi, Linda. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, guys, we thought we'd um, we we talk about you know every week. Uh, I know many many of you are trying to you you ask us um, you know um, all these strategies are great, Nova and David, but you know what if you can't go no contact uh, with the parent because you have children? And I guess this is what you know what it's all about is um, is talking about how we can make it as safe as possible for the children knowing they are going to have to spend time you know with um with the with the other parent who you don't believe is you know um uh, safe you know? Mm -hmm. yeah so uh everyone uh before we go on any further please just say hi as you join in as always, and just let us know where, where you're from. But Hannah Louise McKell there, Linda and Aletha so far. Um, for no other reason, guys, so it's just nice to know where about in the world you're from uh, because, like I say every week, you never know who's around the corner that might be going through what you're going through. And please just yeah, comment your questions below and David and I will answer as many as we can um, as possible. So, yeah. So, um. Where do you think we should start, David, with um, with, with the emotional abuse? Um, I guess. Well, I think it's important at some point we, to identify the pattern, how it repeats itself. Um, yeah. I looked up some statistics. I'm kind of a stat guy. I don't want to bore you guys too much, but I did look up a few things. And, I love um, <laughs> and in Australia, in, in 2016, 350 or 356,000 notifications issued by state and territory authorities about children suspected of being harmed or at risk of harm from abuse and or neglect. So this is a big problem, huge, and uh, everywhere, not just Australia. It's here in our country, too, and the United Kingdom. Um, Five million children witness domestic violence every year here in the United States. Every single year, five million children are witnessing this domestic violence. And uh, I got another stat that <clears throat> a third of abused children abuse their own children. So this is a definite cycle that's repeating itself and it's everywhere, not just Australia. So I'm glad we're talking about this. Uh, yeah. And I got some other stats I'll talk about later, but I think it's really important to identify that this does. This is a cycle. It repeats itself. We learn from our parents and uh, by example. And it's yeah. not just how our parents are treating us. It's how they're treating each other. Very, very important. Um, exposure mm -hmm. to emotional abuse. Just, just watching parents fight and uh, dealing with parents' addictions. Neglect. When they neglect each other, no intimacy physical um, abuse, cheating, things like this. This kind of exposure is very damaging to children, very much yeah. so. Yeah. Yeah. Great, great points, um, David. And I think, um, you know, sometimes, you know, we, we hear that, uh, you know, from victims that, oh, you know, I, it was just easier to stay. You know, the toxic person, the narcissistic partner makes it so incredibly hard. Uh, to leave, you know, through things, well, you know, financial abuse. You know, when you've got kids uh, and you think, of, well, I've got to put a roof over their head, I've got to, you know, I've got to buy them school uniforms and I, I don't want them to have to give up their, you know, their ballet and their football simply because, you know, I don't want to be with their father anymore. And because of this, they, you know, sometimes they stay in these, in these abusive relationships and I guess... Mm -hmm. What, what they're doing is um, the children are, are witnessing, you know, like you said, the emotional, even if it's not physical, uh, they're, they're witnessing that emotional abuse, uh, if, if not directed directly at the children, 
it's still abuse if those children are witnessing it between their parents because this affects the kids and children have an innate, um, this innate ability to take it on as being their fault. You know, it's like yeah. well, you know, if, if mummy and daddy, um, they're fighting, that, that must be my fault. You know, if I hadn't spilled the cold like this morning or, you know, if I hadn't been naughty last week, you know, then mummy and daddy would be, you know, talking to each other and not yelling at each other. So this is where, you know, you guys have got to weigh it up, Do, you know, by staying and exposing the kids to that. You know, it's not, yeah, it, it's not, um, it, it's not in their best interest to, to, to stay in these toxic relationships. That, that's right. I mean, when, when parents have their own emotional void, their own emotional problems, something going on in their life, it's really hard to be attentive emotionally to their children. Uh, people tend to meet physical needs and not so much the emotional needs. Yeah. And, 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 yeah, very damaging. Very. So, you know, when one, one parent is, is being abused um, and normally they're the one you know, most of the time who's not disordered, but, you know, they've been ground down so much through the gaslighting and, you know, just the, the insidious psychological abuse that they then become emotionally unavailable to the children. So this, in essence, I, give, I guess, gives the children um, two parents who are, who are un unavailable, you know, to provide um, all of their, you know, to have all their emotional needs met. That's why, yeah, we advocate so strongly for not you know not staying especially if you've got children yeah yeah it's so it's so common that one parent in a bad relationship in the family will stay for the parents and or for the children they compromise their own needs believing that i'm staying for the children's needs when in yeah. fact you're involved in an emotionally abusive neglectful relationship which is damaging to the children big time yeah so we don't stay for the kids, we leave for the children. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly right. The best, the best thing uh, you realize when you're in these abusive relationships, the best thing you can do for your children, um, you know, whether they have to give up their ballet football or go to another school, uh, all of that stuff is better. And I bet you if you asked your children themselves, if they would rather give something like that up and see, you know, mummy or daddy, whoever, you know, appropriate parent is see them happy and smiling again I bet you I, I just bet you your children would say all I want is for them to be happy you know they don't want all those you know those um those tangible you know those those physical um things yeah they can do without well, I, I don't want yeah I don't want dad to work day and night just for us to have all these nice things I want dad at home yeah, yeah. exactly yeah. we often think when you know we're doing things for the kids, and yet if we ask them, you know, straight to their face, they'd say, "Well, hey, I'd, I'd rather have you here than, you know, have a an expensive house that's, you know, paid off in in five years' time." You know, it's um, I guess it's all about priority. Go to, but, um, go to the top yeah. private school and have the best this and that. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. need they need your father and mother both there. Yeah. yeah. Okay, we've got uh, we've got Crystal Baddams here. Hi, Crystal, and we've got uh, Bronwyn. Tobin's here. Hi, Bronwyn. Uh, Mel's here again. Mel is from Victoria. Uh, Mel is the uh, founder, everyone, uh, from the Australian Narcissistic Support and Recovery Group. Uh, Mel's uh, has a private group and a public group. It's a wonderful, wonderful support group. So Mel will put the link in the comments tonight. So please, please do yourself a favour. All that extra support, guys, which you know you need as much as you can of, and um, join um, the Australian Narcissistic Support and Recovery Group. And uh, there's just so much information and support from other victims and survivors. So, yeah, hi, Mal. Uh, who else have we got? We've, uh, we've got Vicky, Piercy. Hi, Vicky. Um, and who else? Shani B's here. Hi, Shani. And... Linda Carroll's here. Linda says, uh, let's try and open your question, Linda. Linda says, no abuse is acceptable, but I honestly believe verbal and mental abuse is more damaging than physical from my experience anyway. 
the black eyes and the broken ribs heal, but the verbal makes me question everything I say and do. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, so many victims, I imagine, would, would agree with you, uh, Linda. And the, the ironic thing is that, uh, you know, domestic violence is, you know, often only prosecuted and not often, you know, we, we can only get restraining orders and things like that. We can only get, get someone to act on abuse if there is bruises, you know, and you do have black eyes. And this is just, you know, the, the, the crazy thing that, um, that, like you said, psychological abuse is damaging and the bruises heal, uh, the, the brainwashing and that mental abuse takes a lot, lot, lot longer than, than the bruises. So, yeah, absolutely right. Yeah, and then the, the physical abuse, sexual abuse tends to be golden periods in between where emotional abuse is so constant. It's, uh, they say uh, neglect is much more psychologically damaging neglect more than sexual or physical abuse. So that mental verbal attacks like that is very psychologically damaging. Yeah, extremely. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, Shani B, B says, I 100% agree. I was in a physically abusive relationship before the NARC, and strangely enough, I felt 100 times more loved than I ever did with the NARC, and 100 times less mentally, F-U-C-K-E-D, I won't say that word out loud, <laughs> um, Shani, but, um, yeah, so you're saying that you're in a, a physically abusive relationship, um, but you were saying that, that the mental abuse was, was worse um, and, and more damaging for you, yeah, and that's what so many of you do say. It's just, um, it's... <laughs> it's incredibly uh, debilitating and you can't explain it. And, and I'm, you know, you often do minimise it yourself uh, when you're in the midst of these relationships because you don't have any bruises because, you know, we've kind of been conditioned by society that it's not that bad, you know. You, you, you haven't got any bruises, um, you know, and people, especially men, don't they, David? Uh, men, um, this goes back to... Um, a, a, a point that I often hear on my posts with Brighter Outlook is, um, is you know, why this is does this just doesn't happen to women? It's men too, and I, you know, one hundred percent agree. It just seems that it's it's more women that talk about it, and more women that write this stuff, and more women that you know post the memes, and that's why I guess it all comes across as you know being from a woman's point of view so i just want to reiterate guys that you could just swap man and woman okay because this does happen to men i guess my point is that men are conditioned by society uh not to talk about this stuff and um you know if you're you know it's a real girly thing to do to talk about your emotional problems you know so um if, if you look at it this way, men are conditioned not to talk about their problems and that they would get ridiculed if they came along and said, hey, I was emotionally abused by a woman. You can understand why more men don't come forward because they would get, you know, made fun of at the very, very least. So it's like, you know, it, it's, it's almost not worth them doing that. It's shameful. Yeah. It's shameful. That's what I notice with my clients. Uh, nine, up to 90% of sexual abuse victims never tell, never say anything. It's very common with men being abused by women. They don't say anything. We yeah. don't know. We don't know. Yeah. Be because it's, it's it, yeah, because it's humiliating. It's humiliating for them because, uh, because of the way society views it and the fact that, you know, um, We've, we've just got this thing that, you know, only women get abused. And, I, you know, it's, it just makes it really hard for men to come forward, especially with psychological and emotional abuse. So I want to say to all the men out there, for those of you who are watching, uh, there is support available. And um, please start talking about this because um, it, you don't deserve to be abused any more than, than a woman does. So, yeah. Um, okay, who have we got? 
uh, Vicky says, hi, uh, my name is Victoria and in, I'm in WA and this is my first time. Great to have you here, Vicky. Um, Hannah Louise says, I hate what he did to me and I left, but some days all I want is him and no one. It's so, I was going to say messed up. <laughs> I guess I was addicted. Yeah, well, that's, yeah, we're getting on to, um, the, I guess, the trauma bonding there. Um, yeah. It is addictive, isn't it, David? These these abusive relationships. Goodness. Yeah, if you've had if you've had a kind of relationship that is so extremely up and down so fast, uh, your brain becomes addicted to it, like drugs. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's exactly like drugs, um, Hannah. And that's what I want you to remember every time you think about him and miss him. Um, this is your body craving its drug, which is the narcissist. Uh, you you don't you can't love someone who abuses you. Okay, the, the, what you're feeling is cravings and I want you to go and read up on more on trauma bonding because that's what you're experiencing. Um, it's not love. You can't love someone who tries to destroy your life. Okay. Uh, Bronwyn says she stopped the cycle. Good for you, Bronwyn. Um, who else have we got? Uh, Rebecca Fitzgerald's here. Hi, Rebecca. Mark Silverwood's here. Says, good morning from the UK. Hi, Mark. Uh, Vicky PC says, six years together, my daughter was put into foster care. Oh, my goodness, Vicky. Because of the DV perpetrated against me. Two years on remand and I got him out uh, and I got him out of jail near on a year ago and he is worse than before jail. I am emotional. Let me see if I can open that up. I am emotionally unavailable as a result. Uh, my daughter is six years old and she tries to protect me, so not fair. She stresses about me. Oh, yeah, David, did you want to talk a bit about that, that parentification and, and, you know, what happens when the, the kids take on these roles? Yeah, that, that's a good point. Another very, very important part of growing up around domestic uh, abuse in the home. The children do not have their needs met. The parents, like I said before, tend to have their own emotional problems going on and can't be attentive and can't be a parent. And it forces the parentification of the parent, the parent the, of the children, sorry, of the child. The child can parent, be parentified to take care of siblings, take care of their own self, take care of their parents. Um, so often, so many of you guys out there had a parent that was, you know, in a bad emotional state for a lot of part of your childhood, and you you were there for mom or dad. You know, I'm so sorry. Are you okay? You know, things like this, and that's awful. I mean, talk about missing out on your, you know, emotional needs as a child. Mm -hmm. Now you're yeah. providing emotional needs to a parent, and um, that that is the biggest recipe to grow up and and be in a, a an abusive, neglectful relationship when you're older. I mean, it, you're just walking right into that. It's so easy. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, like you said, they, they miss out on their childhood, don't they? And um, it's, it's not only, I guess, the, the, the child having to step up and, and, you know, that the parentified child having to step up because they feel like they have to protect, uh, you know, the, the parent who they see, you know, is, is being abused. But also in uh, with the toxic parents, you've got uh, very often that, you know, that disordered parent is uh, not allowing that child to be an individual, not being able to express themselves, not being able to go out, you know, and have a peer group and have friends of their own. And they're, they're treating the child like an adult, talking to the child about, you know, adult concepts and, you know, such as mortgages and girlfriends and boyfriends and, you know, and just really adult concepts that should not be discussed with a child. A toxic parent thinks this is okay because they're, you know, they're forming a bond through a, a friendship with their child. And this is not what the child needs. The child needs a parent, not a friend. That's right. I mean, you only have a few years to prepare a child for very important things that we need to know. And that's socialization amongst our peers. We're putting them off in a school, five years old. You don't have much time to prepare them. 
Yeah. 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 And one thing that's, that, that often doesn't happen with the children of toxic parents, um, you know, narcissists and, and borderlines is that, uh, they, it's, it's normal, you know, when for a teenager, you know, when they get to about the age of 12 or 13, the, uh, the parents are no longer the most important person in the teenager's life. That ship has sailed. You are no longer, uh, you know, the moon and stars to your child. And it can be really sad, you know, when you see them. Um, they don't need you as much. And But you know what? Most parents get through this because it's normal. It's normal to, you know, to see your kids wanting to go and play football on the weekend with their mates rather than, you know, hang around the parents. You know, that, that that's normal stuff. And uh, you, 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 look, you know, you look forward to seeing your kids spread their wings, whereas a narcissistic parent will get jealous. They will get jealous of their own children if they um, are taking, you know, someone else is taking that child's attention away from the toxic parent. And this can be extremely damaging, you guys, um, to children because uh, the, the children feel, you know, guilt. They feel, you know, they feel obligated, you know, to be there with that toxic parent. Um, and they feel like they're a really awful person if they actually say to that parent, um, you know, I, can I, I'd rather go and play football with my mates um, you know, if that toxic parent, the toxic parent can make them feel bad, that condition their child to feel really, really guilty and bad with just an eyebrow raise followed by, you know, a silent treatment. The child knows I've done bad. I've, they've, you know, narcissistically injured the parent and often they are not allowed to grow and experience normal things like having a peer group. And this is just as abusive as having to, you know, protect the non-disordered parent, it's its really, really difficult for these kids. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, autonomy is such an important lesson and a need in a child's life. And that, that starts right away. That's one of the first lessons we learn or should. You know, yeah. think of um, the a child or an infant when the moment they are crying, and they look back at their mother and realize their mother's not crying. Their mother has a different emotion than them. Oh, we're different people. And that should be supported throughout the child's life. But instead, you have a disordered parent. There's no autonomy. You're me. You're an extension of me. This is you. you know? Yeah. It's awful. Absolutely. It's awful. It's just an awful way to grow up. Goodness. Okay. Who else have we got here? Uh Trina Bunkles here. Hi, Trina. How are you going? Trina's from Perth. Uh, Bronwyn says uh, financial abuse. Yeah, isn't that a big one, Bronwyn? And we've got the Undone Mama here. Hi, how are you going? Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, the Undone Mama is from the US. Uh, so I'm not sure if she's um, anywhere near you. I'm, I'm one of those Aussies who goes, oh, you're from the US? Do you know David DeMars? <laughs> <laughs> like there's not, you know, 10 billion other people <laughs> in the U.S. Um, but, yeah, thanks for joining Thank us. Um, yeah, who was it that mentioned um, Bronwyn to have financial abuse? Yeah, isn't that a big one, David? We talked about, I think it was the last live stream, didn't we? We talked about yep. the whole episode, guys, was on financial abuse and, uh, you know, what you guys go through. And this is a, a a huge thing in why lots of victims stay in these relationships because of the abuser um, controls finances, um, you know, has their name on everything and makes it absolutely impossible for them to leave. And, you know, the, the, the non-disordered person, the victim, has to weigh up, you know, and the, trying to make these decisions, weigh up these decisions when they're, uh, they've been gaslighted and their self-esteem is rock bottom, trying to make, you know, decisions about their future for them and their kids, it's no wonder many of them stay because they're not in, you know, an emotional uh, place where they can make a rational sound judgment for everyone and they go, I guess a lot of the time they go where it's, it appears to be the least resistance, you know, the path of least mm -hmm. resistance. And also this safety zone. 
you know, it's it's like better the devil you know. This it it might be abusive, you know, I might have um, you know, no money, but at least I know it. You know, it's familiar. Yeah. Yeah, okay. what we said last, last time, financial abuse is insidious. It's it's profound with emotional abuse. It it starts with financial abuse. There's financial control, financial exploitation. Yeah. yeah. And it's, Anybody and it's, have questions about that? Watch the last show we made. Yeah. Yeah. And it all seems to start off, doesn't it, under the guise, like so much of the abuse with a narcissist, it all starts off under the guise of caring. You know, they care about you. So, you know, they want to look after the taxes and, you know, you don't be bothered with that. And, you know, I'll handle the mortgage repayments and, you know, just sign here. You know, I don't want to bother you. And this is how it all starts from, you know, coming from a supposed place of caring. And before, you know, the victim knows it, they've, they've lost everything and they've got no control over their lives to while they're in the relationship or to have the capacity to leave. So, yeah, it's a huge one, Bronwyn. Okay. Who else have we got? We've got Venus. This is love you both. Hi, Venus. Thank you for joining us as always. RG Seshi. Uh, hi, uh, sorry, uh, RJ. Hi, RJ. Uh, what is RJ says? So what can we do to notice a narc or protect ourselves from getting into the same situation again? The narc radar, David. <laughs> yeah, well, that's a great question. And that's what we need to do, right? After a horrible experience like that, we learn from it. So so why did you enter that relationship? Um, you know, one of the biggest things that people talk about, red flags, right, with signs to look for, things like this. Um, but it's not always easy to look for and to see. It's uh, a lot of it is how we feel. Um, you'll learn that you're, you've kind of ignored your emotional needs, which means you have ignored your feelings. Um, in doing that, you have, you know, it's been easy to pass simple signs that people, other people may have noticed in emotional abusive people. You know, so it's, so a lot of this is fixing ourselves, getting healthier ourselves, having, you know, great in our emotional intelligence. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and RJ, you'll find, you know, we, we talk about this a lot that, you know, when, when you come out of these relationships and you allow yourself time to heal and, you know, one of the most important concepts to, to understand is that you need to have your experiences validated. You need to have everything you went for um, have meaning. Okay, uh, there was nothing wrong with you. You're not crazy. You were traumatized by a master manipulator. It's only then when you when you have your experiences validate, validated, you can start to undo the brainwashing because that's essentially what happened. You were brainwashed, um, you know, and all of this stuff caused you to become trauma bonded. And, you know, engaging in that self-care. And when you do, you know, dip your toes into another relationship, which we all have to at some stage, the red flags that you ignored in the beginning of this relationship, they'll be deal breakers for the next one. You will, you know, you'll, you'll pick them up like that. Uh, and that's, that's what will happen when, when you, you know, you allow yourself enough time. So, um, yeah, it, it will happen. I promise you, you will get to a stage one day where you haven't thought about them and you feel, you feel so much better. But you, you must give yourself time to, to heal. And um, and don't isolate. That's right. Great point. You can't go. You can't have a successful relationship until you've healed from the last one, the previous one. We can't just go from one to the next. Got to learn. Mm -hmm. Got to heal. Yeah, and so. and that's, that's such a good point, David. Because and I've spoken to you know a few of you. I know many of you have come to see me for a, a private um, counseling session, and a few of you. Uh, you, you kind of prove that point because they they were in another relationship. You know, they were lonely and they got back on the dating sites and they were in another relationship, you know, within you know, a few months, you know, two or three months. And, uh, of course, 
you know, that they're, they're talking about how this person is maybe worse than the other one and, you know, they're, they're being re-traumatised. And that, guys, is because uh, you haven't healed, you know, and those those wounds that, you know, were, were gaping and, and open while you were in the last relationship, they haven't healed yet. Okay, so you're not going to attract anyone who's healthy uh, while you haven't healed yourself. It's just so important. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the Undone Mama, I love that name, uh, says even friends and family will try to convince a victim that psychological abuse isn't that bad. You said it. I often wish that the damage done showed on the outside so people could actually see what we've endured. I'm trying to expand that. Uh, see what we've endured and survived yeah uh yeah that uh, just so true um i'm done mama uh often you know it is friends and families that that will say to us you know that it'll, it'll be the people you know that, that it's coming from a place of caring you know they, they, they hate seeing us in pain and they want us to you know just get over it just get over it but they just don't understand the trauma you know and it's the nature of narcissistic abuse, it's so incredibly hard to articulate and tell other people about it. And, yeah, I find that a lot of people, you know, that I speak to and I'm sure David does too, that um, you're, they get their experiences um, minimised and just, you know, negated by, by their loved ones. And this can be absolutely heartbreaking, you know, when you're trying to, um, you're trying to get support from, from the people who love you. Absolutely. And, and, and I mean, this happens by even professionals, you know, are, are being or tell someone, oh, get back up on the horse, you know, try again or um, write them a letter and apologize for um, all the abuse you've gotten. You know, I mean, this, this happens. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I hate that. Uh, write, write, yeah, yeah, write, go sit down and write your abuser um, a letter. Goodness, um, this is why I get people to stop referring to start referring to them as your abuser. Uh, you know, and yeah, that's don't we hear that a lot? Um, <laughs> the victims uh, being given strategies by other people to, you know, to I guess make up to that person or you know navigate the minefield so it's not it's not quite so abusive and they can you know, survive in that toxic. Uh, environment well then they're not going to call it toxic are they whereas really the only advice we should be giving these people is to get the hell out of dodge that's right yeah and, and i mean this shows if you're in a situation like this it shows that you know you've probably been living with this maybe most of your life maybe you were abused as a child maybe you're neglected you know because that's <laughs> what happens we're neglected and abused as a child we find ourselves in relationships like that later yeah, yeah. And, and the cycle repeats itself until, yeah, we break that and, cycle. And, and most of my clients don't, they can't identify neglect or child abuse in their childhood. And they'll, they start always with, my childhood was great. It was perfect. No problem. No abuse. And I got to point it out to them. And they're like, oh, wow. Yeah, that is bad. Yeah. Yeah. Gee. yeah. Or, or they... So it's yeah, absolutely. I, I hear that a lot too. Um, or they just, they totally brush over it. You know, they, they minimise it. Uh, I think I mentioned this, um, you know, a few live streams ago where, you know, um, one woman came to see me, this always sticks in my mind. And, um, you know, she said I was, you know, I, I experienced, you know, some sexual abuse as a child, but it, it wasn't that bad, you know. And, and then she just kept going you know, and, and talking about, you know, it, it wasn't that bad. A lot of people got a lot worse than, than I had it. And I've just mm -hmm. gone, whoa, you know, back up a minute here. Let's talk about this. Let's, you know, let's talk about the, the effect, ha your feelings, what happened, um, what this did to you. How, how do you think that you're bringing that, you know, into your, you know, the feelings of helplessness, you know, how do you think you're bringing the, those feelings that you experienced then as a child uh, and also the, the uh, the feelings don't forget that um, it's kind of been made to be okay. Like this is how you prove to someone that you love them, you know. Um, 
it just leads to all kinds of, um, you know, uh, negative coping mechanisms when we get into, you know, adult relationships. Um, and yeah, I, I have clients that rush over this stuff and minimize it because that's what happened to them when they were a child. Perhaps they went to the other parent and they said, you know, someone's touching me. And that, uh, that parent said, uh, I don't believe you, you know, or, you, you know, or it's, it's not true. You know, what does this well, do to a child? Yeah, two, thir two thirds to 90% never tell of sexual abuse children. So they're not telling. Yeah. They're not Incredible. saying anything. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Lanya Sinu, I hope I pronounced that right, Lanya, uh, is here. And Lanya says, I will never be with anyone again because I will never trust any man again. Uh, and if you think after being with a narcissistic partner, it will be okay, I think you are tripping. Yeah, look, you're obviously in, in, in a lot of pain, uh, Lanya. And, um, yeah, those those words just scream of um, the, uh, the uh, they're just a reflection of the, you know, the utter trauma that you were put through by this toxic person. Um, I'm hoping that you will be able to, you know, get together with other uh, survivors and victims here tonight and that you will see a light at the end of the tunnel because there is light after narcissistic abuse. Don't let that toxic individual take any more of your life, okay? You start to take your power back and kick them out of your head. Um, they don't deserve to have any more of your power. And, and if you let them steal that the rest of your life, as in, your ability to have another relationship again, then, you know, you're giving them even more of your power. Don't let them ruin the rest of your life. You, I promise you um, there is life and light after after narcissistic abuse. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's going to be a journey, isn't it, David? Yeah, it, it is. And your feelings are normal. Uh, you know, don't worry. It, it, this is a result of this kinds of stuff, emotional abuse. You're... This is based on your experiences. You need to have good experiences to trust people again. We have a problem trusting ourselves and our own judgment for getting ourselves into positions and stuff like this. So mm -hmm. just realize, you know, you don't have to do anything. Take time to heal from this. And the only way you'll trust people again is to trust people again. You got to be around people. Be happy. Yeah. I mean... I'm telling you, if this is the way you feel, this is might have been a, a pattern in your life. You may have had people, you know, that have given up on you and, and abused you and things like this in your life. So yeah. heal from this stuff, at least, at least feel better about it. Take the time to heal from this stuff. You need to. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and that that inability to, to trust yourself in, you know, in, you know, not being able to pick a healthy relationship is just a, a direct result of, you know, all that gaslighting, you know, and things like that that they experienced where um, you were conditioned to not to trust yourself, you know. Um, you were conditioned to ignore your gut instinct and that's what you have to relearn. It's like, you know, relearning how to walk again and talk again. You have to teach yourself this skill. You have to teach yourself um, how to be happy. You actually have to come out and practice being happy. Um, but the more you do it, the more, you know, your, your feelings and thoughts will fall into line with that behavior. Yeah. That's right. If, if you've been victimized, you must heal from it again, or you will most likely be victimized again. we got to heal. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we've got um, Trina Bunkles here says, the smear campaign is so isolating. No one believes us. They believe the narc lies, that we're crazy. It's actually crazy making. Yeah. Oh, my goodness, the smear campaign. Uh, the, the smear campaign, I, I, would, I don't think I've heard of um, you know, a narcissistic abuse victim, David, that hasn't been, um, you know, uh, who hasn't um, experienced the good old smear campaign. And the smear campaign happens, Trina, because you cottoned on to them. You saw that mask drop and you you could expose them, okay? Their greatest fear in life is of that weak, insipid, true self being exposed, 
So that smear campaign is a preemptive strike to make everyone think that you're crazy and for them not to believe you when you, you know, go out to expose them. And it is debilitating. De debilitating. The narcissist will stop at nothing to, um, you know, to to make you out to be a crazy, disordered person. Yeah. Any more yeah, advice? Uh that smear campaign yeah, piece of advice for smear campaigns try to realize that saying bad things about people you know you don't have to sit there and worry about true or false you know defend yourself because it's all false it's all lies they're trying to startle you but just realize that saying bad nasty things about people is antisocial behavior okay they're giving themselves away when they sit there and trash you you know, we don't do that. And they'll come up with all kinds of lies that sound real and sound like believable. But the important part to remember is we don't do that. We don't do that. We don't sit there and just talk bad about people. So I know people are going to hear these bad things that people are saying, these lies, but realize that they look bad for doing it. And just yeah. because somebody says something doesn't mean it's true. How many, and like you said, no, we've all been smear campaigning. We've all had lies said about us. So, you know, we don't believe other things, other people, when they say lies or just things, bad things about people, you can't just take that as fact. And the other thing is we just don't behave that way. It's yeah. anti-social behavior. Yeah. yeah. It's ugly. Mm -hmm. It's just mm -hmm. as ugly as whatever they're claiming about you. Yeah. Yeah, Trina, don't listen to it. Block it. Um, you know, if someone wants to come to you and say, hey, I heard this. You know, on the grapevine, they're saying horrible things about you. Tell them you don't want to hear because you know it's going to be hurtful. You know it's not going to be true. And your anything that you do to try and defend yourself is just going to come back and bite you because the narcissist, you know, will have uh, preempted anything you can say. And they always throw that little seed of truth in there, you know, as, as David said, and they embellish it with pathological lies. So you know, a lot of the time people... Um, just you know cling on to that little seed of truth that's all they see because they recognize it so you will you a lot of the time you will only go and prove the narcissist's point don't defend yourself as david said they will prove themselves they will out themselves in the end because here you are you're not mentioning anything about them you're doing your job you're getting on with your life you're 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 healing, you're moving forward, and here's them still going on and on and on about it, how you're a crazy person. That is going to come back on them eventually, but don't defend yourself against it. It never, ever works. A smear campaign is abuse, guys. A lot of people don't know that. Smear campaigning people is abuse. It's abusive. So you just let that person sit there and abuse and abuse and abuse. And that's what they look like because it's not uh, a hard thing to to show to identify someone's just talking bad about somebody. We don't do that. Yeah, that's yeah. simple. Yeah. So I hope that's helped, Trina. Uh, good luck. Nicole is have, here. have people around you in your life telling you you're a good person. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, Nicole Roberts is here. I have a question. I've called him out on being a, narciss a narcissist. Now he is sending me snips of what a narc is saying and I'm one. Oh, goodness. And this is, Nicole, this is the reason, uh, David, did you want to talk about this? This is the reason why we don't tell them that they're a narcissist. Uh, yeah. He's now giving her <laughs> snips. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, 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 you're not letting someone know they, they have some disease or ailment they can cure. Uh, supposedly narcissism is, in, is uncurable. So telling them what they are is simply providing them with the information on how to have better lingo, how to start telling you that you are the narcissist, you're projecting. I mean, if I have it, the, the, I've heard narcissists sit there and just projection, Projection, and you try and say something, anything to them. Projection or gaslighting, you know, and it's like, oh, you found the words. Did you? you look them up? You know what it is now, don't you? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. You're a master of it. Yeah. yeah. And the thing is, Nicole, they're never, you can, you're handing over your cards, which we never do. Keep those cards 
close to your chest. Uh, you tell them they're a narcissist, they're just going to project it back onto you, which is going to make you feel crazy because you've got all the evidence once again and they're not believing you. So I guess, you know, can you imagine, you know, I guess picture this scenario. Can you imagine the narcissist going, oh, my goodness, you're right. Well, I do do that and I do do that. Um, you got me. You have absolutely got me. Look, where do I go for help? You know, I, I need to be cured of my narcissism. It's not going to work. They could care less. They're not going to believe you. They'll either fly into a narcissistic rage or they'll most of the time just project it straight back onto you. Uh, the, yeah, we, we don't ever tell them. You know, I know we all do it. We all go, we all have that light bulb moment and we go, wow, they're a narcissist. But keep those cards close to your chest because, you know, handing them that information is only going to be flipped back on you. Yeah. Yep. Um, yep. So what, what he's saying when he's sending you snips of what a narc is and saying that you're one, well, number one, you need to block that contact so you don't get that crazy making behavior. And number two, he's just projecting, you know, that's what narcissists do. Everything that they, they feel about themselves, about that true self, uh, they project that onto you and then they attack it. They're, when they attack you, uh, they're attacking their own weaknesses. So, yeah. And, and know that you're not going to get anything resolved with them. You're not going to fix anything with them. You're not going to have your feelings validated. Go do no. that with a professional. Talk to them and, and get this stuff figured out in, in here. Yeah. Not with them. Not with them, guys. There's just more manipulation, more, you know, more abuse, more damage to your brain. Yeah, you tell them they're a narcissist, they will just abuse you more with the information that you give them, would they? Just, yeah. Yeah, they don't care. It doesn't matter to them that, <laughs> that they're a narcissist. That's not a bad thing to them, I don't think. Yeah, you know, most of them would prob probably be, you know, proud of that title. They certainly, it wouldn't bother them. Okay. Uh, Chris McLean's here. Hi, Chris. It says, hi, Nova and David. Sorry, I'm late. Had to walk the dog. As, as long as you got your dog, <laughs> your dog had its walk tonight, Chris. That's that's important. I've got a dog myself. So totally understandable. Um, Vicky says, I overcompensate and that is causing more damage. All she needs is me, but being emotionally unavailable, I can't give her that right now. Yeah. Um, so you need to start working on, on yourself, Vicky. Uh, lots, lots and lots of self-care. Um, get to therapy if you can. Uh, you know, talk to a counsellor who gets it, who gets, you know, the traumatic nature of narcissistic abuse um, so that you can be, you know, emotionally available for your child because she needs you. She needs one appropriate parent and that's you. Uh, yeah, that, that's a good lesson. We don't have to overcompensate for the other missing parent or abusive parent or the parent that just neglects the child, can't really overcompensate too much. You need to be the role that, that you, you have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you, have to, you have to look after yourselves, guys. You can't, um, you can't put everything into the children because if you're not taking care of yourself, how can you be there for the children? You know, they need a mother or father who's happy and healthy. Uh, they don't need one who's who's stressed and you know um, can't you know is crying all the time because they're so you know um, distraught and, and stressed out. They need a parent who's who's taking care of themselves before you know so that you can take care of them. Yeah. Yeah. To provide what a child needs, you have to give it to yourself first. You have to know how to provide your own emotional needs to give your child emotional needs to meet them. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. We got Michelle Hall here. Hi, Michelle. Uh, thank you. That was incredibly insightful. I've just come out of a five year relationship with an extreme narc, and I just identified with my mum not allowing me to go out, but to look after, and I'm just going to try and open your question, but to look after and raise my brother and sister. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, my goodness, Michelle. Yeah, so it sounds like Michelle was, um, was parentified and had to take on those, you know, those adult jobs, which shouldn't be, 
know, it shouldn't be left to the to the kids. You should be out. They should be out playing, you know, and getting dirty and you know playing on the swings and doing kids stuff. Um, yeah. So sorry that happened to you, Michelle. But I'm I'm really glad that you could you know relate to some of the information that's here tonight. Uh, okay, Bronwyn Tobin says. I'm here to tell you, ladies, that after 30 years of physical and emotional abuse, I left last year. Oh, my goodness, from when you are inspirational. There is hope, love, and life after leaving an abusive relationship. It takes uh, a hard work and dedication. I'll just try and open that up. Uh, to heal and to learn to love yourself again. Yeah, it does. It, it, takes, it takes work but it's worth it. Yeah. Congratulations and thank you for sharing that. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks from, uh, from when you've, um, you're definitely an inspira inspiration to everyone here tonight. Thank you for, for that, uh, for that good news story. There is light after narcissistic abuse. Uh, okay. Who else we got? Uh, Replying to Nicole Roberts, Shenny says, if you don't have kids, just block him. Narcs never change. You will never be happy as long as you are with him. Great advice there, Shenny. Uh, yep, they don't change. They don't think there's anything wrong with them. That's, you know, that kind of got, feeds back into, you know, why there's just no point in telling them that they're a narcissist because they don't see that as a bad thing. You know, it, they don't think that, that there's anything wrong with them and, why would you change yourself if you like yourself? A narcissist likes the way they are. They think it's everyone else who's got the problem. Yeah. Yeah, this is a developmental problem. This started right as they started developing in childhood. Nothing wrong with them. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. And that, that, that false self, you know, that they developed as, um, at, I guess, as a coping mechanism when they were young. Uh, it's that shield of armour that um, there's nothing wrong with me and nothing can hurt me. And I, to, to keep this you know, false self alive, they need the energy which comes from your pain and from you, you know, you giving them, you know, giving you all your energy so that they, that false self can stay alive. Yeah. Um, Aletha is here. Hi, Aletha. Um, as a child, we didn't have family dinners together very often, but when we did, there was nothing as terrifying as a man armed with a fork, knife, and a plate. Oh, my goodness, Salifa. Wow. What do I say to that? Um, it's just, yeah, dreadful that you had, you viewed those times, you know, that should be, you know, um, I guess when the family comes together, you know, can talk about their day, you viewed that time as a time of terror, you know, where you didn't know what to expect from your abusive father and where, whether the simple you know, utensils that you would, should be eating with were going to be used, I'm assuming, as, you know, weapons uh, to hurt you in some capacity. That's just horrific. I'm so sorry that you had to go through that, Alita. Yeah, that's awful. Um... Mal Lloyd says, this is one thing I have really noticed with one of my children. She feels that she hasn't had a childhood. It breaks my heart to hear it. Yeah, it is, it is heartbreaking. Um, I can only imagine, yeah, what, what, she's, what she's going through, Mal. Um, I imagine that, you know, she would, would have witnessed, you know, her mum being, you know, unhappy a lot and possibly, you know, a lot of emotional abuse and possibly physical abuse going on. And, um, and you know, this is, this is one of the repercussions of these abusive relationships, isn't it, um, David, that kids often, you know, do come out of it feel, missing out on a lot of things that, that kids from, you know, healthy families um, take for granted. Yes. Children are victims of domestic violence that's in the home. You have two parents fighting, arguing, domestic violence. That child is a victim of that, often called the silent victim, the forgotten, right? The invisible, the unintended, secondary victim. The child pays for this stuff, big time, big time. 
Um, if we are allowing our children to hear the violence, to hear the fighting, the arguing, watching it, if we're, it, you know, some of us, or some, some of us have been forced to participate in some of this fighting and abuse with, with the parents, um, being blamed for it, uh, defending, having, finding yourself defending a parent for the abuse against them, uh, interfering, stopping abuse as a child. All of this stuff is abuse. It is abuse. Yeah. And we have to know this. Yeah. yeah. You know, and often, um, I know within, you know, child safety notifications, uh, notifications, you know, to our child protection system, uh, the people um, where the, who are, I guess, notified upon um, the, the, the parents who are engaged in that, in that um, domestic violence, uh, a lot of the time they, they just don't get, you know, that you can have your children removed for that. And this is child abuse and, and you need to you know, protect them as much as you can from that environment because uh, that those children need a, a, a parent, um, at least one parent who's willing and able uh, to protect them. And um, children don't have a say, you know, that they're vulnerable. And, you know, like you said, um, children who hear, you know, witness this stuff, it doesn't matter that they weren't, you know, that the, the abuse wasn't directly directed straight at them or they were hit, you know, the fact is that that is incredibly frightening for children who, you know, might cower in their bedroom, you know, and, and then come out to, you know, cuddle their, their mum or their dad, whoever was abused and, you know, try and, you know, make it all better. This is incredibly um, terrifying for children. So um, it's just so important to get out of these relationships um, and, but have a safety plan in place before you try and do it, guys, so that you do remain safe. That's right. That's right. Exposure to this violence or to abuse, emotional abuse, fighting, stuff like this, it compromises the, your children's safety and security, sense of safety and security. They need to feel that. You can't just say, oh, they're safe, safe in their room. You know, no, they need to yeah. feel safe and, and, and secure. Home. Yeah, they yeah. need to feel safe in their home, don't they? Yeah. yeah. And um, yeah. It, it also sets them up, you know, for future relationships um, in, in the sense that, you know, if you've got boys and the boys are witnessing this, you know, that the boys are, you know, hopefully not, but, you know, could grow up and, and, and take on some of those behaviours thinking, well, you know, this is, this is what men do, you know, this is men, you know, yell, yell at their, their partners or, you know, whatever, whoever's being the abuser, the man or the woman, you know, and that, and, and also for girls, girls grow up thinking, you know, it's okay for a man to yell at me, you know, um, and, you know, it's, it's not that bad. Uh, and they go out and they seek inadvertently, they go out and seek the same relationship they knew that was familiar to them when they were growing up, okay? And a healthy, a healthy relationship, as we know, David, would seem foreign to them and they would just, you know, maybe put it off as, um, oh, I just don't get on with those sort of people. They just don't appeal to me. Uh, but what they're not realising is that's all their, those unhealed wounds that are directing them on a subconscious level to the toxic person because it's familiar. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I've, I've listened to women tell me that, yes, I know my husband or my boyfriend hits me and it's wrong, but I also know when they do that, that they love me. Because that's, and we find out that's what they watch their father do to their mother. You know, that's what their idea of love is. That's what they've learned love is. Hitting, yelling, arguing, screaming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, children of domestic violence are three times more likely to repeat it. That, that's huge. Um, growing up with domestic violence, you're 74% likely to commit violent crimes. You're six times more likely to commit suicide. You're, you're uh, what else are right? Oh, this is an interesting fact. Kids that live with domestic violence that are just exposed to it, it alters a child's DNA and they're aging seven to 10 times or seven to 10 years faster as they're aging. That's incredible. 
Wow. That is, it's that... altering, just being exposed to fighting, arguing, yelling, stuff like this is making children age faster and changing their DNA. That's, That's unbelievable, incredible. isn't it? Um, I would imagine that maybe that that has something to do with the constant anxiety they're going through, the constant state of oh. hypervigilance, that constant state of fight or flight, you know, needing to get ready to fight to protect themselves and that, you know, that adrenaline and cortisol levels pumping all the time. I would imagine that that would age you know, age as someone quicker because simply because it's so taxing. It's so taxing on the nervous system. We aren't born uh, being able to regulate our own emotions, period. We can't. We need our parents to help us do that. And if our parents are fighting, arguing, drinking, doing drugs, not at home, things like this, they're not teaching us to regulate our own emotions. And that is very traumatic. Our own emotions are, are is what is traumatic to us, our reaction. Yeah. Yeah. And they need boundaries. You know, kids, kids, kids crave boundaries. You know, it's um, yeah, they, need it. they need boundaries. Yeah, you don't give a child boundaries; it's very dangerous. You're you're creating narcissists. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we've got Mylene there. Hi, Mylene from, uh, and she says hi, Nova and David. Uh, and she's from UK. Uh, Danny Elise is here. Hi, Danny. Uh, they're also jealous when you've got finances in order. They make you feel bad because they don't. Uh, David? Could you repeat that, please? Sure. Uh, they're, they're also jealous when you've got your finances in order, uh, meaning when you've got, you know, property and, and um, stuff, I imagine, uh, and they make you feel bad because they don't. Yeah, that, and that's not jealousy, that's envy. So, so the reason disordered people are so envious is they have a personality disorder. The reason we give that, that, that label of personality disorder means that their life is, is unmanageable, to say the least. They, they, they have problems attaining things they need in their life themselves. That's why they take it from people. Um, you yeah. know, if I can't do what you're doing, I might be envious, right? I might, I, I might want that. I can't get it myself. I'm going to try and take it from you. Yeah. I, I want to destroy you for it even. That's envy. Envy. Yeah, yeah real and, problem. Yeah. And narcissists, as we know, have that massive, you know, sense of entitlement, you know. Mm -hmm. So if you've got something uh, that that's, you know, that's not fair because I, I deserve that. You don't. Um, yeah, just that massive sense of entitlement. And they, yeah, they will punish you because you don't deserve to have that. They do, you know, and they're just misunderstood human beings who've had bad luck in their lives and, you know, um, that they should they should have all of these, um, all these, you know, finances and money in the bank. But, um, you know, everyone's done the wrong thing by them. It's someone else's fault and you don't really deserve what you have. They will rationalise it somehow. Yep, yep. Instead of getting it themselves, they can't do it. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, Rebecca Miller, too. Hi, Rebecca. Rebecca says, hi, Nova. So glad I could finally join you. I am so glad that you finally got in too, Rebecca. Uh, it's wonderful to have you here. Uh, we've got Karen Quast here. Uh, hi, Karen. My financial abuse was I had 40 grand in the bank before I met him wasn't long before all my money was gone. He had everything in my name, so I couldn't leave. Before all my money was gone, he had everything in my name. Okay, so he, he had it all. So, oh, goodness, Karen. So you lost big time with the narcissist. I'm so, so sorry that you've had to go through that. And uh, this is what they do. They, they manipulate you. And, you know, like we spoke about earlier, under the guise of caring, they get you to, you know, put stuff in their name and, and, you know, you give them control of bank accounts and assets and things like that. And, um, and then before you know it, they're, they're um, devaluing you and discarding you and you lose all of, all of that stuff. So I really, I hope that you're getting some legal advice around that care and to try and, you know, get some of that stuff back because it's just, it's not fair. And um, I, I really hate to see, 
you lose all of that. So, um, yeah, I really hope you're getting some legal advice to try and get some of that back. Yeah, that's a tough lesson. Wow. Um, I reckon. Uh, Chris McLean says, my daughter's, uh, my ex's daughter, 10, was diagnosed with Asperger's and ADHD earlier this year. Of course, he doesn't believe it and says it's just the poor parenting of his ex-wife. Um, someone else's fault, whom I get along with well. Just since, uh, since she, hold on, I've just lost that. Um, whom I get along with well since splitting with my ex nar His ex-wife has told me that when his daughter returns home from a visit um, with him, she, whoops, she goes into, I've just lost my camera. Uh, she goes into uh, a meltdown mode and she is left uh, picking up the pieces of, of the poor girl trying to hold it all together so she doesn't cause him to go into a narcissistic rage while she is with him. Okay, I'm just going to try and get my – did you want to talk to that one, David? I want to try and get my camera back. There we are. Yeah, there you go. You got it back. I, I <laughs> you, you lost me. I think they're sharing a child that was diagnosed with – Asperger's. Yeah, right? it's a long one. Let me. My ex's daughter, ten, was diagnosed with Asperger's and ADHD earlier this year. Of course, he doesn't believe it and says it's just the poor parenting of his ex-wife, whom I get along with well since splitting with my ex now. Yeah, I mean, th this is simply responsibility as a parent and what we need to do for our children. He doesn't care. He's not responsible. He has. He's not responsible for himself. For, for his marriage, his relationship, or his children. I mean, that, that's horrible. Jesus, yep. the child needs help. Child yep. needs help. And the father just wants to dismiss it and blame. I mean, this yep. is just you know, point the finger and blame. Like, that's what the child needs right now. Yeah. That's too that's bad. I'm very sorry. Yeah, the, the ch exactly. The child's been um, obviously diagnosed and needs help around that, needs you know, um, whatever support she can get and the father would rather blame shift. And so, you know, he's got something to attack, you know, the, the other parent about and blame her for the, for the child's, um, you know. Uh, That's right. Instead of be responsible, instead of fulfill your role as a father, uh, that's horrible. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Hey, Casey. Hi, Kay. I can't stop crying and we split in May. Um, when will it end? Oh, my goodness, Kay. Uh, it will – you You have to talk to other people about your experiences, Kay. What you're going through with missing your narcissist is because of, you know, the addiction to the narcissist. Um, we, we miss – you miss the, the person who was not real. You miss that, you know, that those good times. You were conditioned to think that you couldn't live without this person. And now you have to retrain yourself uh, to be happy again because they didn't want you to be happy without them. Okay, that, that gave that person power. Uh, and now you're going to have to uh, retrain yourself to, you know, to, to, to be happy again. And this person is never going to make you happy. They're those good times, you know, those snippets of good times that you're remembering and you're missing were never real. And you must have all these experiences validated. It's just so important to engage in self-care and work through what you've been through. So I really hope you're talking to a good therapist, um, you know, so you can heal from the trauma that you've experienced. Yeah, yeah I know it's the last thing you want to do or think about, but you got to kill that hope. You got to kill the hope and stop thinking that that was real, that, that, you know, you want that back again because it never, never was. It never can be. Yeah. And I'm sorry. I know. Yeah. Uh, get help. Yeah. Get some help. Support people. Yeah, absolutely. KK. Um, when Tobin says, I am so enjoying tonight's chat. First time joining. Oh, I'm, you know, David and I are, just, yeah, ecstatic that you're here, Bronwyn. Keep coming back. Um, yeah, very happy to he have you here and to be providing support to other people as well. 
Okay, Rebecca Millard says, my fear is never being able to trust someone again. Yeah, and we, yeah, we've talked about this a little bit uh, or quite a bit tonight, uh, Rebecca. I worry that I will be hyper alert and perhaps see flaws and narcissistic traits in everyone I meet. David? Yeah, very common reaction. Very common. It's a hypervigilance. Uh, your brain's telling you, I don't want to get hurt again. I can't let this happen again. And you're not, you're not, you know, what's, what's going on. Okay. So just, just keep learning, keep learning. <clears throat> this is about not ignoring our feelings. We've ignored our feelings. We've ignored red flags. We've ignored when that person was so, not quite something right with them. We've ignored it. You know, we yeah. brushed it off. We, uh, you know, that dying need that we, I want to help someone so much. I got to help them. I got to help them. I got to be there for them. I got to help them change stuff like this. Yeah, there's some, there's there's something wrong. There's something that happened in our past, typically. Yeah, yeah. stuff we need to heal, recover from. Yeah, and that's the thing, Rebecca. Um, like I said earlier on, when you don't don't you know get in, don't even think of getting into another serious relationship until you are healed. Okay, you can't you won't attract anyone who is going to be you know, a healthy person unless you're healthy and you've healed from what you the trauma that you've you've experienced. Uh, but just don't forget that when that time comes, you're going to you know have these boundaries that are up here, and you're going to have your intuition back again. So you, um, you're going to uh, you're not going to ignore, you know, your gut instincts. You're going to take notice of that. So you're going to have all those weapons in your arsenal. So, yeah, is it scary? Damn straight. It, it's bloody scary. But you need to practice um, doing it. You need to do it until so you get good at it. Yeah, if you want to know, you don't trust anybody, your oxytocin, a hormone, which helps us trust people is probably down to zero. So we, you've got to build that up, right? If you want to trust people, guess how you do it? You got to go out there and interact with people, start trusting people and you'll trust people. I know it's crazy, but you got it. You got it. You got to do it. You can't give up. We need people. We need relationships. And I mean, friendships, anything, interactions with people, start small, heal from this. Your brain's just uh, telling you, you know, to be careful, to watch out so it doesn't happen again. That's all. And, yeah. and, 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 you know, narcissism is always there. You always saw it. You saw it in people. You saw narcissists. Now you're just scared of it because of what happened to you this time. So yeah. we need good experiences. Without more experiences, you won't gain confidence. So have more experiences. Keep going. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Great advice. Okay, we might just answer a couple more, guys, um, before we start wrapping it up now. Um, yeah, I just want to apologise, as I always do, uh, for in advance for not getting around to answering everyone's questions. It's really difficult. So, guys, please talk to each other, support each other, um, and, um, yeah, just keep coming back on Tuesday nights. But, yeah, just wanted to apologise because I know it's just it's impossible for us to get around to, to answering everyone's uh kelly bruins here hi kelly um it's been 12 months since my breakup and i am still damaged by her i don't want to ever see her again but it feels like she has control still oh goodness kelly she is um she is going to control you as long we someone can only control us as as long as we we allow them to and this I know it's a really hard lesson and it's a really hard um, thing to kind of wrap our mind around, but um, <laughs> you've got to practice, you know, retraining, your, rewiring your brain and retraining your brain to, you know, to, to, I guess, put all those experiences that you went through with that person into the abusive basket. This person was abusive. They were toxic. They didn't love you because they're not capable of love. Um, and just, you know, keep kicking those negative thoughts out of your head, you know. And um, like David said before, stop, stop, you know, giving yourself hope around these relationships. You've got to cut that thought off in your brain every time it enters your head because this person is toxic, okay. And um, you can be happy without them and you will heal 
they will always be a narcissist. They will always be you know, a toxic individual, but you've got to keep working at it and keep, you know, practicing and retraining um, your emotions. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, you'll get better. You'll get better. I promise. Just give yourself more time. Interact with people, guys. I, I couldn't stress enough. You guys want to feel better. You feel like isolating. Worst thing for you. Yeah. We got here from neglect. We got here from being neglected. Don't neglect yourself more. Don't isolate. It's the worst thing. I'm telling you. Worst, worst thing. Got to interact with people. Family, friends, whoever. Interactions. Got to. You have to. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, we've got Sue's just arrived. Hi, Sue. Um, you can go back and watch the rest of the video, guys. This will be on the timeline. So for those of you who've come in late, you will be able to watch it uh, later on. Uh, we've got Nicole Eleanor here. How do you? Hi, Nicole. How do you know when you have finished healing from being married to a toxic husband? Uh, goodness. Um, did you want to answer that one, David? Yeah, how's your attitude towards that person now? Um, you, you know, maybe not so angry. One thing is, is uh, you don't feel sorry for them anymore. It's more of just compassion. You know, I don't care. You don't, they aren't in your thoughts as much anymore. You aren't too scared of people you don't know anymore. Those are some good signs. You're, you're healing from an abuser. Yeah. yeah, when you don't have an effect on your life anymore, Nicole. You know, I, I often tell people, you know, to get to that place of, you know, meh, you know, where you don't care if they win a million dollars in the lotto or, you know, they come down with some, you know, sexually transmitted disease that's, you know, well, maybe you do. <laughs> but um, anyway, you just you just want to get to that place where it's meh. You, you, they're not <coughs> affecting your life anymore. You don't hate them. Well, of course, you don't love them anymore, but that they don't have an effect on your life that controls you anymore, and um, that is that's freedom. That's freedom from your from your abuser. That's when you're not when you start getting yep. towards that place. Yep, yep. No emotional attachment. Uh, no more emotional investment. Whatever, I don't care. They're them and they're on the other side of the world and I don't even care what they're doing. Absolutely. I wish them the best. There's one. I wish them the best. <laughs> um, I know that made a bunch of people just cringe just now. Huh? Yeah. yeah. It's like, oh, I can't wish them the best. You know, uh, oh, what was that? I put a post up the other night. Um, it was about, you know, do you, do you – wish them a good day or do you wish them, you know, um, bad luck? You No, what you should say is you wish them the day they deserve. There you go. And I think that says it all. Okay, Sarah Wagstaff is here. Um, hi, Sarah. Says, just got back from walking my fur baby too. Uh, glad I caught this live stream. Glad you're here, Sarah. You, we're just about to end, so go and um, watch it on the timeline. Patty Colombo is here. Hi, Patty. Yes, that's exactly what he sa says. He likes himself and didn't want to change or get therapy. Yep. There's nothing wrong with them, Patty. Yeah. Okay, we've got Lisa Hurst here. Uh, hi, Lisa. Uh, the problem is that one child will normally end up narcissistic too. Sometimes that can happen, uh, Lisa. Or with my ex, all his siblings were narcs. All four of them were NPD. Yeah, I, I've, I've heard of that, David, where all the siblings, um, you know, narcissistic mother and father, uh, and, yeah, clearly role modelled those behaviours and, and all four of these siblings were very, very far on the spectrum of NPD. Absolutely, yeah. I've seen entire sociopathic families. Yeah. yeah scary yeah yeah okay um we might just answer one more guys who else have we got that i haven't said hello to yet uh cindy robertson's here hi cindy they're envious for our attention absolutely um goodness 
sorry, guys. There's so many comments here tonight. It's wonderful to see. Good. Um, Sarah says, uh, replying to Nicole Eleanor, 18 years and then 10 to retrain. It will happen with tools and advice from people who have been there. We were all here together. Yes, don't isolate. Yeah, some great words of, um, of advice then from Sarah. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Great. Okay. Well, we might leave it there. Uh, just for those of you who um, have joined later, uh, the purple is for uh, a national, well, it's called Step Up. Uh, everyone's using uh, the, the Step Up hashtag, uh, um, and it's Step Up for Child Safety that's being promoted in Australia at the moment to, uh, I guess, demand um, a family, you know, reform in the in the family law, law system so that children are safe. We want um, children to be safe um, in, in this system at, at the moment. Um, we don't believe that that's being done. So that step up hashtag and wearing the purple is for that cause. Um, so, yeah, hence a lot of the conversation tonight uh, with Dave and I has been, you know, around um, children's safety with, um, you know, with these abusive relationships. Did you have anything more that you wanted to um, just add before we go, David, about, you know, keeping kids safe in these types of relationships? Yeah, it's just so vitally important to realize that we're teaching our children something all the time. Whether even if we're neglecting them, we're teaching them something all the time. And this this repeats itself. Abusers, people who have been abused, a good portion of them end up abusing people. Um, and, and if you don't end up abusing people, you end up being in relationships where you are being abused. This is just... Uh, horrendous. You got, in, in, and this isn't just Australia. Uh, in the United Kingdom, more than half of child abuse victims experience domestic abuse in adulthood. More than half. If they've been, if they've experienced any kind of domestic abuse as a child, then they go on and experience it in adulthood. Uh, in America, a third of abused children abuse their own children. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So this is this is everywhere. This is everywhere. It becomes yeah. a generational thing a lot of the time, doesn't it? It just gets keeps getting repeated. You know, the children are the victims. Are their children victims? And then they go on um, and, you know, uh, either abuse or be abused because it, it, it's what they know, okay? If they normalise it, it becomes, uh, it becomes a normal environment to them. It, it's not scary. Yeah. And they develop, yeah. develop a resilience, you know, they become resilient to abuse. If, if, if we experience or if we don't know how to uh, take care of danger as a child, we don't learn that. We aren't taught that. Instead, we're presented with danger as a child. You know, that just sets you up in adulthood just to walk right into danger, not know what to do with danger, stay in danger, not even recognize danger, not smell it, not see it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Cause you've, you know, you've, been there, done that, you know, and you came out of it alive. It's just, it's, it's normal. That's, that's life, you know, and this, yeah. this shouldn't be, this shouldn't be normalized by children by any stretch of the means. Yeah. No, no, it's sad. It is sad. Okay. All right. Um, everyone, thank you so much for joining uh, David and I here tonight. Uh, we love having you here. And yes, yeah, sorry, we, we couldn't answer our, all your questions, but yeah, it's just a great excuse to, to keep coming back um, on Tuesday nights. Um, David joins us. David is from Damas Coaching, um, has a fantastic uh, YouTube channel, so look out for that. Uh, and he is joining us, always joins us at 2 a.m. in the morning from Las Vegas. So David's always live, uh, so has to stay awake and um, keep his eyes open so he can very kindly co-host the show with us, which I just appreciate so much, David. So thank you very much. Um, and you can go and get some sleep now. <laughs> thank you. Thanks for inviting me again every time. Thank you. And thank you all of you very much. I appreciate all of you. And like Nova said, any questions, go down, ask Nova or myself. We'll answer them, okay? Yeah. yeah. Try and get back oh, to many. Support Nova. Support Nova. My my followers, can you please just follow the link to Nova's new channel? Go over there and just subscribe. Help her out. Support her because what she's doing is good stuff, and people need to hear this. Okay, thanks. 
Thanks, David. And also, uh, for, for those of you who, I guess, are watching this not live later on and you're watching it on YouTube or you're watching it on you know, Facebook not live uh, and you haven't uh, liked Brighter Outlook Counselling Service on Facebook, please do so because if, if you want to join in these live streams, yeah, and be part, be part of this group and, you know, talk to other victims and survivors and get the support and, and be able to give support, um, the link will come. If you've liked Brighter Outlook Counselling Service, the link will come up on your timeline and all you do is click on that link and you can be part of this audience. You might have to get up at um, 2 o'clock in the morning like David has if you're in the States, uh, but um, it's it's the options there if you've, um, if you've liked Brighter Outlook. So just something to to think about so David thank you as always for, for coming back I, um, yeah just appreciate your your um, advice and, and all your tips and your yeah just all the information that you you've always got I appreciate it so much and I look forward to seeing you again in a couple of weeks great great thank you take care all right. goodbye everyone goodbye Australia see you David bye bye And we David. Okay, everyone, thank you. As always, um, thank you, David, if you're still out there. Um, love, love, love having you here. Um, yeah, always a, a wealth of knowledge, and um, I know we would have been um, lots and lots of help to you guys. Uh, okay, so everyone, uh, to, you know, to provide a forum where you guys can get together, uh, where you can seek support around your um, the trauma that you've experienced uh, with narcissistic abuse and, you know, to be able to uh, give others support as well. Now, to be able to get this, this information out there and, and you know, get, get more support out there for you guys, I'm going to ask, as I do every week, to, for you, if you can share, share, share. It's the only way um, to, to share on social media. It's the best way to get this information out there. So people, you know, recognize uh, what you've gone through and that you you will be able to talk about it and have people understand you and have your experiences val validated. So please share, guys. Um, I've loved doing these live streams. They are on every Tuesday night, 7 p.m. Brisbane time. So please join me uh, next Tuesday night. Uh, I can't wait to um, see you back here again. And please tell everyone uh, if you think they will benefit uh, from these live streams because um, that's what they're all about is helping you. Uh, if you would like to have uh, a private session with myself, uh, I know, you know many of you have come to see me and I love being able to support you one-on-one um, -on -one in your healing. Um, I do Skype. Um, and telephone counselling, so I Skype people all over the world. So it doesn't matter if you're in in the United States, in the UK, New Zealand, uh, you know, South Africa, wherever you are in the world, uh, please just um, inbox me here if you'd like to have a one-on-one -on -one session and I would love to be able to support you in your healing. On that note, I'd like to say goodbye, everyone. Uh, please take care. I'll see you all next Tuesday night. And as always, everyone, remember your worth and then add tax. Bye everyone.